Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone, and in this video we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of the dual venous sinuses. The dual venous sinuses are contained between the periosteal and meningeal layers of the dura. Just to recap some points from the tutorial on the meninges of the brain, there are three meningeal layers, the outer dura mater and the inner arachnoid mater and pier mater. The periosteal layer of the dura mater lies adjacent to the cranial bones, whereas the inner meningeal layer lies adjacent to the arachnoid mater. It is between these two layers of the outer dura mater that the venous sinuses run. Superficial veins from the brain surface drain into these sinuses, with the ultimate endpoint for drainage being into that of the internal jugular vein. In addition, CSF is drained into the venous sinuses via arachnoid granulations. The jugular vein returns blood to the right side of the heart via the innominate or brachiocephalic veins on either side. Let's take a look at the configuration of these venous sinuses and at some of the key large veins and tributaries that you need to know about. Starting with the superior sagittal sinus, this large dual sinus, as its name suggests, is located superiorly in the midline and oriented in the sagittal plane. It runs in the attached border of the falx cerebri, starting at the foramen cecum and running anterior to posterior, ending near the internal occipital protuberance. I've removed the brain and you can see this relationship better. The superior cerebral veins drain into the superior sagittal sinus. The superior sagittal sinus then connects with several other sinuses at the confluence of sinuses, where the superior sagittal, straight, occipital, and transverse sinuses meet. Returning to the sagittal view, you can see a smaller sinus located inferiorly and running within the free border of the falx cerebri. This is the inferior sagittal sinus. If we follow it posteriorly, we see that it drains to this sinus, the straight sinus, which is formed by the union of the inferior sagittal sinus and the great cerebral vein, which is commonly referred to by its eponymous name, the vein of Galen. I've just switched to a schematic to demonstrate the relationship of some of these veins. The great cerebral vein is one of the deep cerebral veins, the other important pair of deep cerebral veins being the internal cerebral veins. The paired internal cerebral veins run posteriorly to unite and join the basal vein of Rosenthal to form the great cerebral vein of Galen. The straight sinus is angled posteriorly and inferiorly and drains into the confluence of sinuses. As a point of terminology, the confluence is also referred to as the torcular herophily. Extending laterally from the confluence of sinuses are the transverse sinuses. Coursing within a groove in the occipital bone, these drain into the sigmoid sinuses. I've just rotated to a superior view so that you can appreciate the morphology of both the sigmoid sinuses in relation to the transverse sinuses. It's very common for one transverse sinus to be larger than the other due to asymmetric drainage of blood. The larger transverse sinus is referred to as the dominant sinus. The sigmoid sinus gets its name from its curved, S-shaped morphology and passes into the jugular foramen to drain into the internal jugular vein. I also mentioned earlier the occipital sinus. This sinus extends from the foramen magnum to the internal occipital protuberance. The cavernous sinus is the next sinus to mention. This is an important anatomical landmark due to the structures that traverse this sinus. It's a large venous plexus situated on either side of the cella tercica. A plexus refers to a network of interconnected structures. The cavernous sinus is therefore comprised of multiple thin-walled veins, which is different to the other sinuses we've looked at. Its anterior border is seen at the superior orbital fissure, and posteriorly it extends to the petrous apex of the temporal bone. The superior and inferior ophthalmic veins drain into the cavernous sinus, and so do the superficial middle cerebral veins and the sphenoparietal sinus. The sphenoparietal sinus is a small sinus which runs underneath the lesser wing of sphenoid. The cavernous sinus itself is drained via the superior and inferior petrosal sinuses, 
which returns venous blood to the transverse sinuses and internal jugular veins, respectively. The petrosal sinuses are small sinuses, which as the name suggests, are located in relation to the petrous parts of the temporal bones. To finish with, I just want to point out the key relationships of some of the contents that traverse the cavernous sinus. There are five nerves, four of these pass within the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. From superior to inferior, these are the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve, and the ophthalmic and maxillary branches of the trigeminal nerve. Note that the mandibular division does not pass through the cavernous sinus. Passing medially is the abducens nerve and the internal carotid artery. It's important to remember these contents because pathology here, such as metastatic tumour, infection or cavernous sinus thrombosis, can compress or compromise these structures. Neural compression could therefore be detected on cranial nerve assessment. So that completes this tutorial on the anatomy of the dual venous sinuses. If you have enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel and check out our Patreon page for updates. Thank you for watching.